What is this? That is so un-Islamic. But that's a cultural disaster. Listen, I've been, I told you, whether you go India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, South Africa, Africa, wherever, Arabia, this is a problem in the entire humanity nowadays. All these Molvi Wallas and scholars and long beard Wallas and people preaching and teaching. Many of them have disconnected from their family and their relatives. And that is haram. Allah commands this. This is not a good deed. Don't, again, don't go and say, Sheikh Shafat said it's a good deed. I am reminding myself and telling you and myself, Allah commands this as an order to do. So you guys need to, we need to make dua now to put in our hearts that softness to connect back to our blood ties. And I showed you how we are connected to the mother's womb, the ties. We are connected. You know, there is a hadith in which the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, your spouse, your spouse, and it works both ways, your wife and your husband. You guys want to get day-to-day -to -day topic? This is day-to-day. -day. A lot of us think day-to-day -day is about if Trump in power or if Biden in power. Listen, it doesn't make a difference. The gas will still go up and come down. Isn't it? You play that game. I don't have time to play that game with politicians. Politicians come to us to market them and encourage people to vote them. I don't need politicians to vote for me. Think I need politicians to vote for me? They need us to advertise them. All right. So we don't follow their laws. Yeah, we follow the government laws. We follow the constitution. But not crooked politicians. But anyhow. The prophet peace be upon him says that your spouse, and, and as again I want to say both ways, eh? your wife or your husband, and let's refer to wife first here, should be someone that when you look at them, what does the hadith say? Listen, this is a deep hadith, you know, very deep, you know. He says your wife should be someone that when you look at them, you feel happy. You become happy. You become stress-free, full of tranquility. Sakina, itmenana kal. You know what I mean? Peace of heart, tranquility, stress-free. When you look at your wife, the Prophet said, that's the sign of a good wife. I see most of our husbands looking very serious. You don't smile. <laughs> your wife should be someone when you look at her, you just smile. She brings peace to your heart that you forget all the work in the office. See? Your husband should be someone when you look at him, you feel comfort. You feel itmanana kal, peace in your heart. You feel cared for. You feel comforted. Nowadays, when some wives look at their husband, they feel fear. Fear? They get scared. And some husbands, when their wives open their mouth, they're even more scared. So some husbands always try to feed their wives so they don't talk. That's why they take them out for dinner most of the time. Keep their mouths filled. Because if that mouth opens, well, all hell break loose, brother. But listen to this. Hadith, this is not my words. So all of us who are in that boat, <laughs> you rock the boat, lullaby and sleep. Hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. One of the signs of a good husband and a good wife is when you look at them. Only look at them. Not even when they talk. Just to look at them will bring peace in your hearts. Subhanallah. Do you think we have that nowadays, Brother Salvador? Look, Brother Salvador saying no, and he's an experienced man there. Brother Salvador had about four or five wives, and he, that's experience. He ain't like Brother Azad, and that. that man, four wives? You cross four? Okay. That's why I ask him. Listen, I keep in touch with our community, you know. That's what you call man. He had four wives, so I'm asking him, is that, you see? So he has an experience. So if he tells you when you look at them, you don't smile. <laughs> oh, well, brother. I am so now I get scared to have another wife, you know, I wonder that's going to be like hell break loose, brother. 
And yeah, I'm not telling you guys don't have more wives. Eh? That's in the Quran. And you can't take out that verse from the Quran. I don't care if you're from Japan or China. You could be what cultural, dihati, mental Muslim. That doesn't give you the right to change the verse in the Quran. So unfortunately nowadays, when you look at the husband and you look at the wife, contrary to the hadith, you don't get peace. So if the father and mother, the husband and wife, when they look at each other, they don't find peace and love and relationship, how would the wombs have the connection? You have already disconnected with what connected the husband and wife. So now that love and that peace will not connect to the uncles and the aunts and the grandparents. And the brothers and the sisters, you see? But my brothers and sisters, this is a very deep law in the Quran. Very deep. Again, those of you who came late, please. Allah wa dhil qurba. Inna Allah ya'mudu bil adri wal ihsan. Wa ita'i dhil qurba. Every Friday, the imams recite this in Arabic. Allah has commanded, chapter 16, verse 90. Allah has commanded, Allah has ordered that you must be just with your family members, with your relatives, with everybody. Be just, be just. That's a whole different topic. People not just, they rob their own brothers and sisters. Did I tell you that? I have brothers come here, sisters come here and say, Sheikh, I need you to talk to my brother. I say, what do I talk to him about? Say, he robbed us all the money in the family. I'm like, oh Allah. Well, I will not be able to happen and I said, don't ask me. People praying Salah five times a day. No? People came to me and said, the brother praying five times a day in front of you, Sheikh. Talk to him. I said, talk to him about what? He said, he took all the parents' property. He inherited it and never gave no other brothers and sisters siblings. So not only are we not good, are not being good to our siblings and our grandparents and our uncles and our aunties, but we are committing crime. Huh? We are causing harm. The Prophet ﷺ says, good relationship with your relatives is not only to be good to them if they are good to you, but he says, good relationship with your relatives is when they are not good to you, you be good to them. Allah Akbar. When they are not good to you, you be good to them. See how deep Islam is? That is Islam, brother. <laughs> That is Islam. I know sometimes a lot of us, you see a khutbah is a reminder. That's why we remind ourselves about the reality of today. And this is one of the biggest disease facing people today. Facing people today. Facing people today. In the whole world. Humanity at large. Humankind. A big disease. That's why the Prophet wasallam says, but good relationship is when someone is not good to you, you must make the effort to be good to them. Remember, at least say, assalamu alaikum. At least smile to them. Yeah? And I just want to re remind myself and you of another verse in the Quran. You know, in Surah, before we conclude, in um, Surah Baqarah, and you guys go home and read these verses. I don't have, I, we don't have the time to go into it here. Go and read these verses. Go and check out these verses in the Quran. And you will see Surah Baqarah. A, a very, very interesting verse. You know what Allah says? Chapter 2, verse 177. Chapter 2, verse 177. And I repeat these verses. So you don't go and say, Sheikh Shafayat said that. Please go and check the Quran and you read it yourself. Don't quote me. Go check the Quran. Chapter 2, verse 177, Surah Baqarah. Very long verse. <laughs> very long, very long, very long. Yeah. But hear what it says. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. In the beginning, I'm going to just do a little brief on the, on the beginning. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَيْسَ الْبِرَّ أَن تَوَلُّوا وُجُوهَكُمْ قِبْلَ الْمَشْرِكِ وَالْمَغْرِبِ Allah says righteousness, you know righteousness? It's not about praying towards the east or the west. You know how people fight about, should we pray northeast, should we pray east? Or you in that side of the world, should we pray west, should we pray north, should we pray south? 
the Pro Allah is saying, Allah is saying in the Quran that righteousness is not about if you pray east, west, north, or south. That you got to do. That's your Sharia. See, like a lot of us feel, see, I'm referring to the prayer now, eh? Oh, when I come and pray, I'm the big holy, 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 riddle this person. I'm very righteous. I pray Salah five times a day. I go to Hajj. I perform. Oh. Allah is saying, like, righteousness is not only that. That you talk about, you pray five times a day, and you perform Hajj, and you this, and you that, and you, and you came from here, and you came from there. No. This is Quran. Allah says, وَلَكِنَّ الْبِرَّ بِرَّ مَنْ آمَنَ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرَةِ وَمَلَائِكَةِ وَالْكِتَابِ وَالنَّبِينَ وَآتَ الْمَالِ عَلَى حُبِّي ذَا وِلْقُرْبَى What does Allah say? He says, but righteousness, real righteousness, is not coming and showing people that you came for Juma and you pray Salah five times a day. But real righteousness is to have faith in God. Yeah? To believe that you have to go on the day of judgment. Huh? And believe in the angels of God. Believe in the messengers of God. And when you give charity, give it for the sake of Allah. For the love of Allah. See, deeper. Eh? He didn't say give charity for the love of something else. Eh? He says give charity for the love of Allah. And then he goes down in the Quran. Allah goes down on a long list. And then he says, Subhanallah, this is such a deep verse. qurba. And he goes down and being good to those who are near to you. Karib walo. Oh, Qurba, your uncles, your aunties, your brothers, your sisters, your, 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 whoever, and that, whoever connects to this, mother, father, uncle, brother, siblings, everybody. That is what this verse means. Go home and read it, my brothers and sisters. Go home. You want to get what is really happening? Go check, see how many families this, we live this today. Allah forgive us. I know I also have a fault in that. A lot of people complain, but Sheikh, we don't see you. You don't visit us. Well, listen, I'm busy. I'm all over the world. I'm all over the world. I try to call when I could call and connect when I could connect. Mashallah, at least a phone call. Nowadays, it's WhatsApp. You can go use WhatsApp and say WhatsApp. It's free. It doesn't cost much to call relatives and contact with them. Nowadays, you could see them on WhatsApp. Go ahead, connect. You can't come from Africa or Arabia or Pakistan or America to another country. Connect through WhatsApp. Yeah? Connect. So Allah goes down and makes a long list and be good to the orphans, be good to the poor, be good to the wayfarers, and oh, he goes down. You know what's the sad thing about this? You meet this brother. He said, brother, what's going on? He said, everything all right? He said, I want to donate, make a donation to some poor people. I said, all right. But you know his brother is poor. He got a mother brother who is poor. He got a father brother who is poor. He got someone from his qurba, near ones who are poor, but he bypasses them. And he goes on and look for someone all the way in Timbuktu. So much care. He's looking for someone all the way in another country, and I don't want to call the country because we have people from all different countries in the world. Alhamdulillah, we have people from all different countries. So I don't want anyone to feel offended. The very first name on the list of orphans, poor, miskin, wayfarers, you name it. Allah says, and your relatives and family members who are considered your near ones, they are top on the list. You give them your zakat and your happiness and your contribution and you care for them first. You go check some of our, go into to, to some of our South Florida money makers. Have you been to the South Florida money makers? You know what I mean? These big money events, when they raise hundreds of thousand dollars, you have some billionaires, oh, I give a hundred thousand dollars. And you got a poor uncle suffering in another country. 
He got a poor auntie suffering. He got a poor brother fighting up to get a job to live. But he's showing off in a big fundraising dinner. I have to give $10,000. That's terrible. What do you call that? Smart people? Living against the Quran. Living against the Quran. The command is before you do all of this, you check out those who are near. Qurba wa dhil qurba. My brothers and sisters, time doesn't permit. I've got to con con conclude.